What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing a spoiler-free review and an unboxing of a new movie coming out on November 28th called The Wrong Door, and it's from Visual Vengeance. So let's check it out. So MVD Entertainment sent this out by way of Visual Vengeance. Uh, they both send me out some of the stuff or because they work together. If you ever are interested, you could pick up a lot of these titles on MVD Entertainment as well. But thank you for sending this out, MVD. Thank you, Visual Vengeance. But uh, yeah, so I got this one. I have never heard of this, okay? Now, recently, Visual Vengeance has been picking up a lot of movies that were on VHS that never made their way to DVD. And they're really trying to kind of save films that never got to see the light of day for a lot of people. Never had a really big audience. And there are you know, some interesting creative film. This movie is essentially one of those films from the 1990s. I think it got distribution like 96, but technically the movie was made in 1990. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my thoughts of this film, spoiler free first, and then we'll go over the ingredients of this film and what I thought of them. For now, let's jump into what I thought of it. So The Wrong Door is about this kid named Ted who is going to film school of sorts. He's uh, studying to do sound folly work, basically all the sound effects that you hear in a movie. And he's got this project he has due on the next day and he's done nothing about it. Well, that night he goes home to work on it when he gets a call that he has to go to work because, yes, Ted is also a jester telegram singer. So he goes to people's doors for their birthdays to sing him a song, maybe come in having a drink, and then bounce out of there. They don't really do this stuff anymore. <laughs> So that's kind of like an 80s, 70s thing. But when he goes to the job for this jester work, he actually ends up knocking on a door where a girl says she needs help. And Ted's scared and he doesn't know what to do. And he gets interrupted by the actual party goer who says, hey, you're at the wrong place. Come on down. And he goes over and does it. Well, while he's doing this, it kind of haunts him. And he remembers that he went to the wrong door and somebody needed help. So he goes back to that door when he leaves and he finds that somebody has been hurt. When he goes inside, somebody sees him. And so he tries to run. And so begins this sort of cat and mouse game of the wrong door. Now, the directors of this film, they were actually looking to make a film that would be very Hitchcockian or Brian De Palma-esque. You know, these are films that they were really interested in making. So it's sort of a thriller drama kind of film that has a really interesting but kind of weird patched together story. So what did I think of this film? Well, it is an interesting film, to say the least, because it's made by about three or four people who put together about $6,000 each to make this film. Now, they didn't pay that all up front. They were paying it as they went over the years to try to make this film, to get it to video, to get it on channel two, and then on to a video cassette, and then from video cassette into Film Threat, who sold it on their magazine, and then into distribution to reach a modest amount of people. Now, like I said, I've never heard of this film. I never knew anything about it. I just watched the trailer and was like, oh, okay, well, this seems kind of interesting. This guy in a jester outfit is getting chased by somebody because he is driving down the road and finds this dead girl in the back seat. Or is she dead? We don't know. But is she dead? She might be dead. I'm not going to say. Because a lot of events happen in this movie that it would spoil the movie overall. But I think this movie is a little bit slow and gappy in a lot of parts. Like there are moments in this film that I think for an indie film of this level that's made on like a $25,000 budget, it is kind of genius. Some of the shots, some of the sounds, you know, everything is homemade. So they did it all themselves and just kind of went for it. I admire films like these, but, you know, I also have to be kind of honest, you know, in watching this, I personally thought that there was a lot of really slow lagging parts, but I do see some of the really good parts in the film that I was actually engaged in, and they did actually use sound effects in the movie to kind of string you along 
into the story of this killer and this other person eventually find out who it is and what's going on now the end might be a little upsetting for some people because it's one of those endings that some people just do not like i won't tell you what that is but just trust me it might be one of those films but they were trying to do a lot for a little so you know i have to give them some credit for what they did with this this is all shot on eight millimeters super eight and at the time there was a lot of filmmakers that were actually shooting on super eight and doing okay with it gave it this sort of almost authentic real film look you know that a lot of video movies didn't really give you so they wanted to try it so they went out and they bought all the equipment and everything for it and just went for it what came out of it is there is some actual tense moments in this film that i thought were pretty decent but they went for this kind of idea where there was like no speaking roles for large gaps of the movie and Sometimes the movie gets a little confusing as to exactly what you're watching because they shoot a lot of the scenes in the dark and, you know, it's nighttime and this doesn't really show up well on 8mm, so you're kind of guessing what's going on. The acting is not really that great, but it's not, like, the worst I've seen. It's just not amazing. For $25,000, I mean, I don't know what anybody would expect for that, you know, so actually not too bad for what they did with the money story that's kind of a little convoluted in it that it does get a little hard to pay attention to because of those long gaps in between that just kind of wander around a lot it seems like the movie doesn't really focus on what the viewer's thinking and more of what it's trying to do stylistically which you know i get they wanted to do brian de palma and they wanted to do hitchcocky and stuff so that's probably part of the reason why there are these long moments that, you know, they weren't masters of yet. It does have a little bit of blood. It's not a gory film. It's not a real horror film. It's mostly just a thriller film that does a pretty decent job with a little bit of suspense. The picture quality of this one is a little rough around the edges because they were running the eight millimeter into the one inch master, which was the VHS that they used for the master of all of it. So. It has like sort of like an unevenness in visual fidelity. So it kind of has some blurriness to it. But some of that gets fixed later on in some of the other shots. It's not so bad. I personally was a little bored by this one. You know, I, I still admire what they did with it. The movie does have some pacing issues and it does really ask a lot of the viewer. Even with it being an indie, I still feel like it's we're talking like a 3.5 maybe a four out of 10, but this is going to be kind of the film for people who maybe have already bought the VHS or grew up watching it. Someone that's just into filmmaking in general. It wasn't a really high selling, high rental movie by any means, but you know, this is a way to preserve some of these films. A lot of the stuff we won't see again. This is probably going to be the, the last version of it. I would be surprised to see a version down the road of this film on anything else. So if you're interested in, in lost films and looking at stuff that's trying to do very unique stuff like Brian De Palma and Hitchcock, this might be for you. But for most people, it's going to fall really flat for them on this one. And it is going to ask a lot. This is definitely not for the casual viewer. There was some cool stuff in it. I did admire it. But it just wasn't overall for me. Maybe it will be for you. So, but yeah, we're going to go over some of the ingredients on this now. Let me just fix the camera here. So this is the cover, which they have quite a bit of different art on it, which I think is really cool. Um, I'll have some B-roll here for you guys to look at so you can see. Now, this is the jester and the cover. Iconography of this is looking pretty cool. Like, I really did like the jester in the suit. It was like an interesting thing that they did just to make the movie a little bit different. Now, this is the commissioned artwork for the Visual Vengeance, which looks pretty cool. Even the the DVD menus on their on their stuff is so cool, man. I really love the effort that they put into the DVD menus and some of the artwork on these. It's very cool. It really just gives a movie that never got a chance just that much more. And I think it's really cool that they do that for these kind of films. Now, that's the one side. We also get the other side here which is the original, well, not the original original, but this is the one when they finally got distributed. On the inside here, we get the disc, which looks like the eyes of the character. And then we also get the Do Not Disturb Door 
door hanger right here, which on the back side is visual vengeance done in like that Motel 8 style, which is pretty cool. Do not disturb the disturbed. <laughs> uh, we also get our stickers, of course, which, you know, f are always included. They're always a little bit different for each one, it seems. And we also have the Wrong Door original artwork here, which I personally, I honestly think is a really cool looking thing. But it also kind of alludes to other things that isn't really in the movie. And that might be why they changed it in the end. I don't know. But this is on the back. It kind of tells you a little bit about the Blu-ray transfer and the acknowledgments of that and who produced it and put it together. We also have the poster that comes with this, which is, you know, the newer artwork, the commissioned artwork, which I will be hanging up because I really like the cover. I think it's actually really cool. Now, some of the ingredients that you're going to get for this is that there is a brand new director supervised 2K HD transfer from the original Super 8 film elements. We got commentary with directors Bill Weiss, Sean Corby, and James Gretsch with director James Gretsch and producer John Schoenenbaum. There's a new documentary that I watched that was really interesting. It really digs into like the whole process of them making this film and like what their expectations were versus how much they spent and all the mistakes they made along the way. All the stuff they learned essentially from making this film. But it's called a Men Make Movie if not millions. And then we get the individual interviews with each of the directors, which I think they used in the film in the actual making of. There's also Disturbing the Wrong Door, Chris Gore interview, second feature at Alternative Director's Cut of the Wrong Door 2019. There's a Super 8 short, Raiders of the Lost Bark, which is just one of the Super 8 films that they shot before they made this movie. The Super 8 short, The Pizza Man, which they also talk about in the making of. It's from 1988 about this pizza man that goes Goes on an adventure mostly in his head and stuff but it's interesting there's a tv episode i guess they did called the gail whitman show the original unedited mother video vhs intros image gallery original storyboards original film threat print review uh, the now hiring movie trailer the wrong door 2023 trailer the visual vengeance trailers there's you know everything else that i showed you plus english subtitles so you have all that in there but yeah this is the wrong door i wasn't a huge fan of it but you know i'd say this is an awesome release for this movie i don't think you'll ever see anything as good as what they've done here for visual vengeance visual vengeance has has really changed the game when for me in my particular opinion for these smaller no-name movies i think it's so great that these movies are getting like the second wind and uh, people are getting to see them all over again so you know obviously it's not going to be for everybody but what do you think have you seen these kind of movies and just kind of found some sort of interest in them you know one of those vhs tapes that you just grabbed and never never got rid of and you're like, oh my God, they got, they made a Blu-ray of it now. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, MVD, for sending this one out to me and Visual Vengeance as well. We got more from them on the way. I got another one that I'm going to be doing soon. So keep an eye out for that. I got a lot of videos coming out. So please keep your eyes peeled on our YouTube channel to see what new ones we got out because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming at you. And we're talking new, old, forgotten, everything. So, but other than that, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for supporting this channel. Hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And as always, long live the void.